In 1978, Gilbert Baker created the universally recognized rainbow flag, a symbol that has become a rallying tool and a declaration of pride for our community. We hear from Gilbert Baker and some of his close friends about the evolution of this iconic symbol. All human beings need symbols. All human beings use symbols. And we need a symbol the way other countries, movements, peoples need a symbol to identify us, to show solidarity with each other, and to proclaim our presence. The rainbow flag is a fresh, new, freestanding, independent vision that has its own special power. I got my first sewing machine when I got out of the Army in 1972. 72 was like glam rock, and I just had to dress like David Bowie every second, and of course had no money to buy clothes, so I thought, well, I'll make my own clothes. Whenever there was a march, they needed a banner. They called Gilbert because he sewed. <laughs> I lived in San Francisco, and in 1978, it was an incredible place to be. It was a time of incredible empowerment and, and political organizing and community building and artistic expression. Really, up until the rainbow flag, the pink triangle was the dominant symbol that we used. Um, and, but it came from the Nazis. It was put on us, and you know, it had a really horrible uh, negative origin about murder and Holocaust. We were trying to change this symbol of oppression into a symbol of power. But there was still something about it that was fundamentally depressing. I didn't even think twice about what the flag would be. A rainbow fit us. It is from nature. It connects us to all the colors, all the colors of sexuality and all the diversity in our community. This really sprang from the head of an artist and was a creative vision to create a symbol that would be a visceral, powerful way of expressing uh, our community, ourselves as a people, and our desire for equality. The original flag had eight colors, you know, the, the pink for sex, red for life, orange for healing, yellow for sun, green for nature, turquoise for magic blue for serenity and purple for the spirit. This was the, the hippie 1978 meanings for the, the thing. Gilbert and uh, Cleve Jones, uh, they, they went to the parade committee with a proposal that they needed to do some big symbol and they proposed doing a flag. We made it at the Gay Community Center in San Francisco just an amazing process of, you know, a thousand yards of cotton that we had to wash several times to get the sizing out, and then natural organic dyes that stain you forever when you're using them, <laughs> and but make the most beautiful, uh, vivid colors. And then the fabric, a very thin cotton that lasted about, you know, a week. <laughs> But it looked like silk and, you know, endless hours of ironing and, and, and the sewing, of course, you know, on a little machine, stitch, stitch, stitch. Oh, it was breathtaking. I, I'll never forget it. It was at uh, United Nations Plaza in, in San Francisco Civic Center. It was Gay Pride, June 1978. It went up publicly on a big flagpole, 30 by 60 foot, twice. It was huge. There was a whole bunch of us, and Gilbert was in charge, and the wind was blowing, and we were struggling and hooking it to the cords that would take it up. And then as we started to, to pull on the rope, the wind took it, and it just billowed open. And it was so beautiful, so astonishing. I knew right at that moment you know, when the flag went up and I was looking into the eyes of people that were around and, and seeing their reaction, I thought, oh my gosh, they, it's, it's more than I dreamed. Hundreds of thousands of people saw these gorgeous flags up there in the, the sun and the wind and knew immediately that that was our new symbol. Within five minutes, people were saying, make me one. You know, the first one that people were saying, make me one. And, Really, within a couple of months, I was like, oh my God, I'm making all these flags and I couldn't keep up. I ran out of pink fabric. I mean, I literally exhausted the entire supply of pink fabric. So I quickly compromised once I went into the flag industry to the six color version, as I call it, the commercial version. When he, Gilbert chose that symbol for the gay and lesbian movement, it 
it sort of eclipsed, I think, any other um, uses of the rainbow, and everybody now really, you know, uh, connects that to the gay and lesbian movement. When I did the mile-long flag in New York City, the event itself was a, a big celebration, Stonewall 25 in New York. It made headlines around the world. I think it was the first time that the rainbow flag as a symbol for uh, LGBT rights leapt across oceans to other countries. I had thought of everything except about what to do with it after it was over. So I literally had teams of people running through it with scissors, chunking it, handing off pieces to people. You know, somebody from London was a friend. Here, take this to London. Here, take this to you know Hong Kong. The very next year, pieces of that flag were uh, marched in Cuba, in China, all over Europe, South America. I get a lot of email stories from around the country and around the world about I put a rainbow flag up on my house and it got vandalized, or, you know, I wore a rainbow flag t-shirt to school and they sent me home, or, you know, I put a rainbow flag sticker on my car and the windshield got broken. The people that have the courage to do that, the people that stand up, um, they're moving it forward. So even though there are hate people out there, they know what they're hating. It has become a, a force in the world that is, I think, unexpected, I imagine, for Gilbert and moving to all of us. You can go anywhere in the world and you will find the rainbow flag and people will know what it means and we owe that to Gilbert Baker. Together, we're changing our world, our planet, from a place of hate and violence and war to a place of love and diversity and acceptance. And that is why we're here. I mean, that's, that's the big long rainbow from before me to well after me.